Now recently ChatGPT released another model called Agent Mode. So in this video I want to look at what Agent Mode is and how we can use it effectively. And it's here looking at this uh, ChatGPT screen we can see Agent Mode here uh, and above Deep Research. Now this is a paid resource only and as you can see here there's a limit to the number so I have 27 left. So what is agent mode? How can we use it? How is it different to other things? So let me use a PowerPoint presentation to maybe help us think about how to use it. So let me just flick over to a PowerPoint. Now I did a video and I'll do a link at the end here looking at deep research and normal Gen AI interaction. So let's just review how normal Gen AI, in this case ChatGPT 5.0, works in real life if you like. It's conversational. It's ask, respond. It's very instant in its response. A little bit slower now on ChatGPT 5, but it's pretty instant. If I'm asking it to do research, it'll do a little bit. It's fairly superficial. And I can redirect the conversation easily. And it's multimodal. So that's gen, normal Gen AI, what we use day to day. On deep research, it's different. It's multi step reasoning, it's agentic. You really put a, a prompt in there and again I say there'll be a link right at the end to how best to use deep research but it's mission based. It Once you set it off it runs completely agentically. It does extensive research. It's what I'd call a linear conversation. I can't move it around and the report is typically text based. So what's agent mode in response to that? Well agent mode and I'm going to run it here on the screen it's like a virtual workbench. Think of it something in between conversational mode and deep research. But I can take over now. It's unlike deep research where we set it off and it goes, I can do it. Now, agent mode covers a lot of things and I'm gonna just use genealogy as an example here, but we can integrate various third parties through agent mode. And it's beyond the scope of this presentation but we'll look at some of the things you can do a little bit later on. So it is a middle ground approach. I can redirect the searches. As you can see what's going in the background here, I could stop that and move it around. But it is agentic. In, a, in other words, it's, it's not conversational. And as much as it moves and does based on the searches, it'll go and do other things. So let's look at some details on agent mode. In agent mode, if you're a genealogist, it's interactive public searches. Now, there are ways, and I can get into, for instance, like family search, that it can go past some of the password barriers. I can integrate with that. It's very difficult to do. It doesn't work all the time. It sometimes gets strict on, if you see some of these screens where it says, are you a robot? Sometimes it'll get stopped on those, are you a robot screens? Sometimes it doesn't. You still, still have to be very careful that it may hallucinate. It's not as bad as the older versions, but still, if you're a genealogist, you start to do the full-blown research. This is just guiding your path. But it's structured, it highlights gaps in data, and it really is good at doing the how and the why, but I'm gonna use it on the who. And you can use it on the who now. It's, it's, it's one of the things I told people earlier on is never to use ChatGPT on who. I'll use the example as who, and we'll see how that works for you. So I'm gonna do a search for one of my relatives called Stephen Bowersfield. And I'm gonna use the same prompt in conversational, uh, ChatGPT 5.0. I'll show you how it would look in deep research, and I'll show you how it looks in agent mode, and then we'll talk about what the different results are. It's a very simple prompt. I'm not giving much information. You, we can always do better prompts than this. But I'll use this as an example. So let's flick back over to ChatGPT and see what that looked like in real life. So I'm here with ChatGPT. I'm in a project and again at the end I'll, I'll show you how projects work. It's a very useful tool and I've got my three conversations here. And if I do ChatGPT agent and deep research, so let's look at ChatGPT first. Here's my prompt here at the top. We saw that in the PowerPoint. And it asks me questions. I've told it asks me questions and it goes through. And I'm not going to give it a lot of information. Again, as a genealogist, I give it a lot more information than this. So it asked me where he was born, uh, about children. I said I have no information, which I do. One of the reasons I chose Stephen is I know in detail the research, so I can go and double check what the results were. And 
ask about a marriage and I give you some information and now here we are on the results this is ChatGPT 5.0 pretty high level page page and a half of information a little bit about Elizabeth and then gives me some ideas how to start so this is a, a good start uh, will put me on the right path very useful as genealogist doesn't give me a lot of information if I go back now and look at the deep research and we'll go back up and we can see that was the same old prompt as I used before and instead of asking one question at a time the way deep research works because it's fully agentic it asks me all the questions at the same time and I give it some of the information um, not a lot I want it to do a lot of work on, my, on its own and now we will have it took 14 minutes it looked in 17 different sources it did almost 350 searches so as you saw in my deep research video these are very detailed research and I, I don't want to bore you there's a probably about eight or nine pages of here I would say it's 90 percent correct and it's it's found it's, it's linked into family search it's linked into other websites and it'll give me the sources here that it's used and, and I can click on the sources that come back over on this side. So a very good result. Took a little bit of time, a lot, a lot of detailed information. Now if I go back again and look at the agent mode, which is somewhere in between, again the same prompt. And it works for it worked for a long time here, it kind of got stuck, and then it gave me a profile. It didn't ask me the questions I wanted to ask. But the strange thing is, is it looked at some of the different resources that uh, Deep Research didn't look at. So I'm getting the same information, not as detailed, not, as, not like a research report, more bullet point, more just informational, if you like, not well put together. And maybe missing a little bit that the Deep Research found, but very, very good, very, very good. And the, the summary findings, and again a list of sources it used here not as extensive if you remember the deep research used 17 sources this is about five or six use roots web use some things again around about 80 90 percent correct but this is a good start i mean as i say as a genealogist i would go in and fully research all this but it gives me some points to look at and as a matter of fact it found a couple of things in a couple of websites that I'm not aware of which I could add to the to my story so very useful as a genealogist so we have the three steps then now we have conversational we have agent mode and we have deep research and I really did a lot of informational analysis on these and so what do we look at the strengths and weaknesses of these so ChatGPT is is really high level it's clarified some information it's not really a narrative it's more hey this is your next steps the agent mode really produced a final report all the facts are there and it's easy as you saw it was in bullet points but didn't have the in-depth detail uh, and some of the sources that deep research had it missed out didn't have the census findings and some my specifics that it didn't have on the other hand the, the deep research was exactly as advertised deep uh, biological narrative with a lot of information the trouble with the deep research because it's a narrative it inferred some detail it came to some conclusions that weren't necessarily correct and it wasn't really clear how it came to it so it was more difficult I think to go through that so agent mode as a genealogist is actually just giving you a bunch of pointers deep research is more a narrative a very nice story so let's look at the the details here how I would look at ChatGPT agent mode and deep research the depth as we were as we were talking about low for chat medium for agent and very deep for deep research for example the everything handling again very low level in ChatGPT all the way into multiple researches on the other hand speculation versus fact ChatGPT 5 minimal speculation whereas deep research speculated more so it prevent, provided scenarios so how does this work for genealogists ChatGPT 5 is great for a quick uh, validation if you're just building some people on the side of your tree 
that's great. It'll give you some factors. You can go off and find them. Now we're looking at the who here, not the why and the how. Um, the agent mode, I would use this a lot more, I think, than deep research personally. It, it gives me a lot of bullet points to go and think. And then once I've done my research, I go to deep research to validate what I've done. So in the interaction style, as we saw, ChatGPT 5 is conversational. Agent mode is, is the in-between. It's task focused, it's agentic, but it's still conversational to some aspects. And deep research is minimal interaction. Once you set it off, it'll keep going. There's no way to stop it or slow it down. So there's some general uses of agent mode uh, that we could use. Um, you know, we, we can integrate it with email. We can integrate it with calendar scheduling. We can get it to do background research on other things. It can do task automation. So it really has got a lot of features that as a genealogist, we may use, and it's very complicated um, and beyond the scope of this, this video, because then I would have to show you the connectors. So what are the tips? How we, should we use this? Now, it's paid research, obviously $20 a month for ChatGPT agent mode, but you do get agent and you do get deep for $20. And there's a lot of other benefits. So I think for most of us, uh, we'll end up paying for one of the AI, Gen AI engines. And how you choose that, it's up to you. My favorite is ChatGPT, but a lot of people like Claude, a lot of people like the other ones. But explore each mode. Um, and I think what we'd always do is start with a conversational one, with the basic one. I showed you very vanilla um, prompt here, but obviously you need to spend a lot of time on the prompt, upload information. The more information you get from ChatGPT, give in to ChatGPT, the better results you're gonna get. And in the agent mode, I will redirect it. So what I do personally is I'd use all three. I would start with, because agent mode and deep research is limited, you get about 30 or so per month. Obviously, the, the most of my conversations will be in ChatGPT 5.0. And then I will vary. If I want to do deep research, I'll use the deep research. Agent mode is great for, I think, the next step, the next level. But remember, again, don't let it do the research for you. This is research augmentation, not research final results. You need to qualify and validate all the results. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a pleasure making it. Here are the links to the other videos I've made on a similar subject, one to projects and one to deep research. I'll hope you'll be able to do it. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a couple of thumbs up. It's really important to a small uh, genealogy channel like mine. And even better, please subscribe to my channel. Have a great day. If you've got any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below. Talk to you all soon.